Terry. Get ready for another classic Western movie brought to you here free on the internet by westernsontheweb.com. Your home for classic Western entertainment online, and it's all free. lucky getting out today. Yeah. When you get out, you might look us up out west at Yucca City. Yeah, when I get out. Something ought to interest you two fellas. Retired. That's a laugh. Read the rest of it. Buck Roberts, famous U.S. Marshal, retires to his Arizona ranch. As long as he's alive, he'll keep bringing us back to this hole. That's what he threatened, remember? When we get to Yucca City and see Nelson, we'll take care of Mr. Roberts. You get it? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Well, here we are in Yucca City. A uh, red moon, huh? Looks like the boss got himself a nice layout. I'll say. Chaps! Gosh! Just what I wanted to see, <laughs> Mary! You think of everything. Everything to spoil you, little tadpole. I'm going to try them out. Come on, Sully. I'll let you ride along. Don't take it too far, bud. Oh, they'll be all right, Mary. You know, I'm an awfully lucky fellow. My kids are getting all the breaks, too. Why, I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Kramer. After all, I have to work somewhere, so might as well be here. Oh, look, Mary. When are we going to get married? When you're sure of your success. That's important for Sally and Bud. They come first. The freight line is their future. Well, I know that, but I... Now, we're not going to argue about that again. Oh. I couldn't possibly love you any more, say, a year from today than I do right now. Besides... Hello, Jim. Hello, Fulton. Um, I'll go after the children. Who's that? She works here. When did you get out? Two days ago. Howard's with me. We heard you had a nice layout here, and uh, Howard and me thought we'd cut in with you. Listen, Fulton, it so happens that I don't need any partners. You know, I made a mistake once, a bad one, and I paid for it. My slate is clean, and that's the way I'm going to keep it. All right, suit yourself. But I'd do some tall thinking about it if I were you. 
You're going to need protection when I get back, and I'll give it to you. Where are you going? Going to pay a visit to a mutual friend of ours, Buck Roberts. The marshal that locked us up once, uh, you remember? Look, Fulton, you can't do anything to Roberts. He took care of my kids while I was in the pen. And he, he never told them about me being there. Mm -hmm. He only felt sorry for you. He blamed me for leading you astray. And after a year, he got you a parole. But he kept Howard and me in that hole for our full stretch. I know, but he was only thinking of my kids. Well, I'm only thinking of me. And Roberts ain't going to get away with it. That's why we're going to pay him this little visit. So long. Well, we'll be seeing you. Here, this should see you through. Shove off and take care of that Buck Roberts you're worried about before he takes a notion to tangle in my affairs. Well, that won't take long. What's the tickle about, Buck? You're grinning like a moonstruck hyena. Boy's doing a swell job this fall. When I get back, I'm going to give him a big barbecue. Where do you think you're going? Where to Sandy's wedding, don't you remember? Down Texas way. You mean to say Sandy's finally hitching up with that Woodard? <laughs> yes. Kind of sounds sappy, doesn't it? <laughs> I got to see that that wedding goes through this time. I've busted it up enough already. <laughs> well, I guess you ought to stand up with him at that. Hey, is Tim going to be there too? Nope, Sandy got a wire from Tim saying he's round up a little late this fall. Guess I'll have to hold the groom up all by myself. <laughs> hey. Please, kind of look after the outfit, will you? I'll be back in a week. Oh, leave it to me, Buck. I'll look after things. Thanks. So long, Button. Buck Roberts. So let's go up to his house and get him. Yeah. And when they'd find him with a bullet in his back, we'd go back to the pen. Only this time we'd end up with a rope around our necks. No. For a long time I've had nothing to do but plan Roberts' finish. So we're gonna do it my way. Get that chair. Now write what I tell you. Marshal Buck Roberts.
Jim. Jim. Horse heading for the ranch. Robertson's whole gang will be out here. Yeah. But they won't find much of him left. Happened to Buck. I wonder what happened. Better ride for sawbones. Get those fancy britches on over those boots. I never took my boots off in the daytime in my life. I'm superstitious about that. I'll get them on. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> get me that razor. I'll fix it. I'll get the things hung. Here. There. Now, this. That woman's still waiting for sure you. Sure, she's waiting. You got that. Now, watch out for your finger, because I'm going to. Oh. <laughs> oh, third time's a charm, you know. Well, and if Sandy don't go through with it this time, I'd sue him, and that's that. <laughs> there won't be enough left of him to sue. <laughs> yeah. With those things wrapping around your legs, you look like a bone legged bandit. Yeah? What am I shaking for? Well, not for the drinks. There's the music. Hurry up, Susie, you'll beat you to the bleacher. Here, wait a minute, wait a minute. Get this cursed John there so he'll be all ready.
Dear beloved, we are gathered here to witness one of the most beautiful of our sacrifices, that of marriage. I am sure you children will appreciate the seriousness of this step. Hold your fire, Reverend. Sue, can you spare me a minute? They thought they had me cremated. Yeah, now stay down, darn you. How do you expect to get well? Oh, Tim, he's so bunged up, it's a wonder his ribs ain't all busted. Not to mention all the skin that's peeled off in other places. You're worse than a hen on a hot griddle. There's nothing wrong with me, I'm all right. This fellow Fulton you were telling me about must be a pretty bad egg. Yeah. Forgot all about him getting out of the pen or I'd have been on my guards. My fault. They use the name of Kramer. Where does he fit into this picture? Tim, do you remember the fellow I was telling you about that his wife died and left him a couple of kids? Mm hmm. Well, Fulton framed him and I found out about it and I got him a parole. Didn't you look after those kids? Well, somebody had to take care of the little shavers. Where is he? Where is he? Why, he ain't dead. Hi, Tim. Hello, killer. That busts my buttons. When I got that telegram of yours, it just scared the stuff and plumb out of me. Hey, you killer. I'm all right. How's the bride? What'd you do, walk out on a honeymoon? I ain't even hitched yet. I couldn't shop for a wedding. When Buck might be dying, maybe. Who got you? A couple of fellows by the name of Fulton and Howard. You remember those two that Buck got a hold of about four years ago on that stage holdup? Yeah. Well, they're out of the pen. No. Well, what are we waiting for? We're not waiting for a thing, and you and I are starting right for Yucca City. They don't know either one of us, and for us it will be a cinch. You said it. Now, if he tries to move out of this house while we're gone, Put a hole straight through him. Now, wait a minute, fellas, wait a minute. Come here, Tim, kill her. You know, we've been pals for a long time. How long have we been operating together? Oh, I don't know, guess about 20 years. What's yeah. that got to do with it? Uh, you're going to take advantage of this situation and deal me a cold deck, huh? You're in no condition to get mixed up in this deal. Yeah. Besides, as I said before, they don't know either one of us. We'll get the job done. Come on, killer. So long, Rough Rider. So long, Rough Rider. <laughs> Just a minute. I know you're chewing gum, but if you make one move, I'll put a hole right straight through you. By golly, I believe you would. This is it, Barn. There's the Red Moon Saloon. You can pull up and drop me there. Well, thanks for the lift, partner. Well, I'm glad to have you along. Whoa, Brownie, uh, back up now. If you're sticking around this town, I'll be seeing you. Well, when you get rid of this load of freight, why, why don't you stop back to the saloon and buy you a drink? Well, thank you, sir. After that long, dusty ride, a fella needs a wet his whistle. <laughs> All right, Brownie, stop.
Howdy. How are you? You're a stranger in Yucca City, aren't you? Yeah, just came in from Santa Fe. Santa Fe? My name's Ace Porter. Mine's Nelson. I'm glad to know you. Have a drink? This is my place. No, but I... I might sit in that poker game over there. Fine. Boy, it's there. This is Ace Porter from Santa Fe. All right, boy. How are you? Hello. Sit down. Thanks. I got two queens. <laughs> Tony's been having a run of luck. <laughs> you better buy plenty, stranger, because you're going to need them. Well, I'm prepared to. All right, Lance. Deal them. How much do you want? What's your change in? 500. Hey, Bob. Pop! Pop! Whiskey ain't on our wagon. There's a stranger driving our team. See, Pop, see, what did I tell you? Are you Mr. Kramer, the owner of this outfit? Well, yes. Now, where's my driver, Whiskey Hanover? Well, he's back in Santa Fe. He got himself another job. And he asked me to take over, seeing as how I was a freighter out of work. Said you wanted this load delivered on time. Well, of course I want it on time. But I can't understand Whiskey pulling a stunt like that. He's worked for me ever since I started this line. Maybe he got drunk again, Pop. No, no, nothing like that, Bub. It's just as I told you, Mr. Uh, Kramer. And if I'm satisfactory to you, I'd like to have the job. Oh, let him, Pop. Well, it seems as if I haven't much choice. What's your name? Hopkins, Sandy Hopkins. Mine's Buddy, but I like Bud better. Well, I'm glad to know that, Bud. <laughs> oh, uh, Bud, you better take Sandy around and back and show him the barn and storehouse. You betcha. You, uh, you can unload back there. Bud will show you the ropes. Well, thanks for the job, Mr. Kramer. Come on, Brownie, stop. Well, Tony, they don't have to see that and... These look good enough for a raise of about 500. Not me. I'm clean. I got them all black. Oh, I'm sorry, Tony. They're not quite good enough. A little ace full. I've never in my life seen such luck. No wonder they call you Ace, brother. Them one spots sure work overtime for you. He ought to be working for the house, boss. Yeah. I need a drink. Here you are, Tony. I never drink myself, but I will buy one for the house. Thanks. Come on, fellas. Well, you've done all right. Yeah, it's not bad. I'd like to talk to you. Ever think of making a business of that kind of luck? In a place like this, for instance? Well, I might consider it. What's on your mind? You know anything about Farrell? Enough to be able to deal 15 consecutive cards for the house on a percentage. That's a deal. Come on, take over. Ace here is going to handle the play. New dealer here, boys. Try your luck. Who is that fellow going in there with Nelson? 
I don't know. He was around here last week. I think they call him Fulton. Top of that. So, we won't be bothered with Roberts anymore. Good. We hid out a couple of days in the High Sierras to freeze our trail. How'd you come out with Kramer before you left? Fair enough. I gave him plenty to think about. Yeah, you must have. He looks worried. All he needs now is one good jolt to bring him around. And that's going to be what? Things are going to happen to that trial shipment of high-grade ore of his. He's going to find out that it'll be smarter to have the protection of a partnership. I get it. Cash me in, will you please? Hello, stranger. Hello there, hello. Well, I see you didn't lose no time in landing yourself a job. You're right, I didn't. You feeling lucky? Well, I just don't feel like that. That is, uh, right now. Well, in that case, I suppose, boys, we better take it easy. You get yourself a drink if you want. On here. Fulton's in the back room there with Nelson. He owns the place. That's Howard over at the end of the bar. Well, what are you waiting for? Don't get so fast. There's more behind this than Buck realizes. We've got to find out what it is before we take in Fulton and Howard. You mean they're going to take Nelson in on this? That's the way it looks. I think our play is to cut ourselves in and string along with them. Uh-oh. Well, you know this, stranger? I've never run into one of these layouts that I haven't been able to take. So go ahead and start dealing them cardboards. In two days, Kramer hauls that high grade. So you'll have time to give him one more chance to sign this partnership agreement. You can tackle him again in the morning. You think of everything, don't you? I'm pretty sure Kramer will do almost anything to keep his past a secret from that girl he expects to marry. Yeah. <laughs> How about some money on account? I feel lucky. Sure. Try your luck. Got a new dealer over there named Ace. Give me some chips. Well, I got to quit you, stranger. <laughs> Hope you can call them better than I can, partner. Thanks. So your name's Ace. That's what they call me. Well, two hundred dollars the ace loses. And a topper. The ace wins. <laughs> Looks like the ace wins for ace. <laughs> that fellow's good, all right. He's been turning him up just like that ever since you put him over there. Give me a beer. There's my last two bits. And it'll be a whole month until I draw any more pay. That is, unless a feller knows where he can make a little easy money around this town. You're Jim Kramer's new driver, ain't you? Yeah. See, I know you from some place, don't I? You don't know, do you? Yeah. You're Joe Howard. That's right. I got out of the pen just two days after you and Fulton walked in. Hopkins is my name. And the same fella that sent me up railroaded you and Fulton. Buck Roberts. Yeah, that saddle flat foot. You know, the next time he crosses my path, I got a bullet for him with his name wrote right on him. You're a little late, pal. 
He's done for. Well, well, thanks for doing me the favor. I ain't heard such good news since I got out. With him driving for Kramer, you men ought to get together. That's what I was thinking. What's Kramer got to offer this sea interesting? There ain't no real money in packing a lot of dumb freight. No? You wait till Fulton gets out of that faro game over there, and we'll tell you about it. Was oh, that Fulton? That's who it is. Hmm. I still say the ace loses. wins. Sorry, brother. You're dealing seconds, mister. Give me that box. Drop that gun, Fulton. Stubborn idiot. What are you doing here? I'm taking her. Take it easy. There's more to this than just getting Fulton. Take Howard's horse and let's get out of here. Take him into my office. Get those other lights lit. Thanks, stranger. That fellow had me all wrong in that card game. Who are you? I don't get it. Where is it? Are you all right? I heard the shots over at my place. Sure, I'm all right. But this stranger here just killed Howard. Howard? Yes. Mr. Roberts, am I glad to see you. I'm awfully glad to see you too, Jim. Oh, uh, why, Ed, this is United States Marshal Buck Roberts. My good friend Ed Nelson, the owner of the place. We practically built Yucca City together. Glad to know you, Marshal. All right. This is Ace Porter, my faro dealer. How are you, Marshal, and thanks again. I'm sorry that fellow you seem to want got away. I don't like troublemakers hanging around my place. You haven't gotten away yet. Well, Jim, I was on my way up to see you. Good. Say the kids are sure going to be glad to see you. Come along. See you later. Anytime. A United States Marshal, eh? Nice cooperation, Ace. You'll be all right here. You just stay put and I'll slip back into town and find out the lowdown. Who are you, anyhow? I'm Kramer's new driver. I was just making a deal with Howard to join up with you fellas when Roberts walked in. So you know Roberts? Yeah. And I've got just as much reason to hate him as you have. He sent me up for five years once. Listen, you ride with Nelson and me and you'll have a chance to get even. Now beat it and tell Nelson where I am. And tell him I want to see him right now. He'll be here. I just can't figure anything else for me to do but, but 
it caught Fulton in. I've got a buck on account of my kids and Mary. Besides, those those miners would never let me handle that high grade if they knew I was a next con. Hey, Jim. Haven't you told Mary anything about being in jail yet? Oh, no, I... I can't. Hey, listen, fella. Mary's the kind of girl you say she is, but she loves you for what you are, not for what you were. You're right, Buck, but don't you see, Mary's given me and my kids five years of devotion, ever since we came to Yucca City. Why, she's, she's worked as hard as I have to build up the line. I can't let it all blow up in her face. Those miners can't turn me down. Mary would have to know why. Yeah, I guess you're right. The only way to prove to them you're on the level is by getting that first shipment through on time. Hey, Jim. Have you told anybody else but Mary about the high-grade deal? No. One or two of my best friends, like Ed Nelson. Nelson? You think a lot of that fellow, don't you? Sure. He's been swell. Even loaned me money when times were tough. Why? Oh, nothing. Just asking questions is all. Fools. Slipping up on killing Roberts and bringing him here on their trail. That Hopkins sure did a stop shooting out that light. He... Fulton is safe. He's just outside of town, about a half a mile down the Yucca Road. Says he wants to see you right away. Bill tells me you're working for Kramer. Yeah, Fulton said it's right handy like. We'll need you, and it'll be worth plenty. Stick on the job. You'll be tipped off when things start to pop. Bill, you get the boys together and keep your eyes open. I'll be right back. Blue Skinner. Oh, that's another thing I was going to tell you. I found out that that new driver I hired is tied in with Fulton. <laughs> According to that, you'll have to take that shipment out alone. I intend to. Well, you got better get moving then, hadn't you? Take the back road out of town. I'll keep an eye out on Fulton. It's Uncle Buck! God, jeez! Buddy, you old turn of a gun. How you growing? Uh-huh. And don't tell me this little lady is Sally. Sure, she's grown up, too. She was the one to baby, remember? Uh-huh. Where did you come from, Uncle Buck? Why didn't you send us a letter or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sally, listen, darling. You know your Uncle Buck don't like to write letters. I'd rather just bust in on people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Buck, I want you to know Miss Dorn, our Mary. How do you do, Miss Dorn? How do you do? One of these days, she's going to be our mom. I <laughs> promise. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. But has it all planned? I'm awfully glad to meet you, Mr. Roberts. Jim's told me how you looked after the children for him. That year he spent in Mexico. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I got quite a kick out of that. Why, uh, Mr. Roberts is going to be around town for a while. He's got some business to attend to. Listen, Jim, you better send me a wire when you get to Santa Fe. I will. Well, come on, gang. Let's go. How old is that ten of yours, cowboy? Oh, about five, six years old. How's he handled? Oh, he's got a good way on it. That girl's still there. Drift on over and see what's going on. But, Jim, why is it necessary to do it tonight? Well, look, Mary, I didn't want to worry you, but Buck's heard that there's some outlaws operating in this territory. That's why he's here. He figures that if the outlaws have gotten wind of our high-grade shipment, we'll throw them off the track by starting a day ahead of time. You see, this way, I'll reach the mines tonight and have a good early start with that high-grade by sunup. I just thought I'd check and see if there's any more I could do tonight before I turn in. Why, yes, there is, Sandy. Go around to the stable. I'll meet you in a few minutes. I'd like to check some of that freight. Good night, ma'am. Good night, Sandy. We're driving out to the mines tonight to load up with that high-grade ore and get started before sunup. 
A day ahead of time to fool you fellas. I'm heading for the stables. Now you tell Nelson I'll be on that wagon with Kramer at sunup, watching for you fellas. Take good care of things till I get back, won't you? I will. And on top of not getting rid of Roberts, you're dumb enough to start that shooting fracas and make matters worse. Well, why didn't you tell that crooked faro dealer of yours to lay off of me? He was taking orders from me. He was giving you a little lesson in how easy it is to keep an hombre broke. Here's your 500. Now, you get back to the shack on my south range and stay there till you hear from me. From now on, I'm taking matters into my own hands. And I'm beginning by getting rid of Roberts. We can't make a move until we do. Now, shove off. Well, we're all set, boss, but where are we going this time of night? You're not going anywhere. Boy, son, what's... Get in that barn. Well, what do you mean, this? Get in there. Now, you know, son, I can explain this thing to your entire satisfaction. Yeah, well, I'm not interested in your explanation. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Let him get that high grade. In the meantime, we'll send Marshal Buck Roberts into the neatest trap he ever fell for. Then we'll deal with Kramer when he brings that ore through Jackrabbit Pass in the morning. With that mule skinner on the seat with him, that part ought to be easy. Hopkins said he'd keep his eyes peeled for us. Here's the plan, and we've got to work fast. You say you saw Roberts headed for the Kramer's house with Jim's two kids? Yeah. We're going to get Roberts through that boy. He'll fall for anything that kid tells him. Listen, cowboy, it's about your bedtime, isn't it? I heard it. I'm taking care of you tonight, and you've got to go to bed. <laughs> well, I'll be drifting down the street. Good night. Good night. Night, Uncle Bob. All right, Sam, get mounted. I'll meet you at the fork on the Jackrabbit Trail. Where's that marshal friend of your pops, bud? Uncle Buck? He just yeah. went down the street. What's wrong, Bill? If Jim took the jackrabbit trail up to the mines tonight, he's in danger, Miss Mary. Danger? Yes, I just overheard three strangers talking at the saloon. They looked like outlaws to me. They said something about trailing Jim for some high-grade ore. I couldn't get all of it, but anyway, they're headed in that direction. I'm gonna go tell Uncle Buck he'll stop me. Bud! Let him go. It'll save time. Meanwhile, I'll start ahead of the marshal. Maybe I can help Jim. Oh, thanks, Bill. Please hurry. What's the matter, cowboy? Uncle Buck, you gotta hurry and go after Pop on the jackrabbit trail to the mines. They might kill him, Uncle Buck. Kill him? Who are you talking about, son? Strangers. Bill Tooley, he's a good friend of ours. Said they look like outlaws. He came to the house to get you to help. He said he heard him talking about training Pop for that high-grade ore. Please hurry, Uncle Buck. Mary's awful worried, too. Tell you what to do, cowboy. You go home and tell Mary not to worry, and don't you worry. All right, but don't forget the jackrabbit trail to the mines. I won't, son. Go on. Give me a drink. Tell that piano player to start the music. Yes, sir. Looking for somebody, Marshal? Yeah, Fulton. Fulton? Oh, you mean the fellow that probably got cheated at the ferro table tonight? That's right. You didn't really expect him to stick around here with you on his trail, did you? I expect anything from Fulton. You see, I know him. You do? Where's that faro dealer you call Ace? Well, he's off shift. But he'll be back later if you'd like to stick around. I'll be around.
Well, what in blazes happened to you? Come on, we've got to work fast. Nelson's arranged an ambush for Buck and Jack Rabbit Pass. I couldn't find him to head him off. There you are, come on. Perform like a trained seal. Roberts will be along any minute. Kramer's been through here all right. There's his fresh wagon tracks. Yeah. He'll get his, too. Right here at sunup. Here he comes. Get her ready. Stick him up, Roberts. What's the idea? That's what I want to know. Don't get excited. I'm just trying to keep you fellows from messing up a sweet deal. Sweet deal? What do you mean, sweet deal? You'll find out, Marshal. How come you're so long leaving this star token flat foot into our trap? I don't get it. Nelson didn't say anything about you being in on this. And you're supposed to be riding with Kramer, Hopkins. Yeah, supposed to be. But Kramer got wise that I was working with Fulton and had me covered and tied me up and threw me in the freight stable. Until Ace come along checking on me. I got suspicious when I saw Kramer leaving town alone. Nelson says we're to take our very good friend here to Fulton's hideout. Well, what's holding us? You boys will hear about the change in plans when we tell them to Fulton. You know where the hideout is, we don't, so lead along. All right, follow us. Keep Roberts right here. You've tried every way you knew to get Kramer to sign that partnership agreement. Maybe if he thinks Roberts here is in some real danger, you might have a little luck. You won't have any more luck with Jim and you had with me, and you know what I'm talking about, Fulton. Well, maybe I won't miss this time. Wait a minute. Now, don't be a fool all your life. Put away that gun. Start using that thing up there for a change. Jim Kramer's not going to cut you in, Fulton. You can depend on that. He's already told Murray about being an ex-convict, and he's on his way out to tell the miners the same thing. Now, get that through your thick skull. Well, that isn't going to change our minds. He doesn't want anything to happen to you, Robert. Well, we got to keep him alive for a while, because Kramer thinks this big ape is nothing but a little tin angel, because he got him paroled, while you were still in the clink. Yeah. I guess you're right. Well, let's go tell Nelson about it. You stay here, Hopkins, and guard the marshal. We'll pick you up at sunup. That'll be a pleasure. For five long years, while I was in that prison where you sent me, I've been dreaming of this day when I'd get you on a spot, you double-crossing flatfoot. Well, you and Fulton will both get your last laugh in the morning. Come along. Don't be too rough on him, Hopkins. Save a piece of him for me. Now, Bud, you stop your worrying. Everything's going to be all right. But well, we've been waiting all night for some work from Uncle Buck and Pop. Yeah, I know. But they'll be back soon. Come on, you help me unpack the new freight, huh? All right. Well, Roberts is gone. What happened? Thought you fellas knew how to tie up a man. 
sure did a swell job on tying up Robert. Never mind the argument. Tell us what happened. And well, he's only been gone about ten minutes. Must have worked on them ropes secretly all night. Well, what were you doing? You're not blaming me, are you, you big lug? I cut it out. I only stepped out the door for a minute to see if you fellas were coming. And when I come back, he grabbed me right from behind the door. Which way did he go? Well, he's heading for town. Probably to get help. Keep us from getting Kramer in that high grade. Can't we cut him off? We can try. Get mounted. You got that agreement? Yeah, right here. Give it to me. I'll make him sign it, and we'll beat Roberts to it. Trying to pull a fast one, huh? With Buck Roberts. You thought you had it figured out, didn't you? And uh, you've been in on this deal all along, huh? Just about since you and I first met. You better sign this partnership paper, Jim. Begin to behave as though you have little brains and everything will be all right. Then we'll be partners. Well, look, Ed, as long as we're gonna be partners, why don't you sign it? It's all right with me and I think we can hit it off. I'll sign it. Times that we'll take him. Now you sign it and we're in business. All right, Jim, now we're partners. Now you can get down, I'll take over from here. Signed your own warrant. Hi, killer. Hi, Tim. Hi, Buck. Huh. Load of rocks, eh? Yeah. We decided to let the real shipment go through tomorrow on schedule. Oh, Jim. I want you to meet Marshal McCall. Hiya, Marshal. Hiya, Jim. 
And also, the killer, Marshall Killer. We'd better know him as Sandy does. Killer? That's right. Well, I'm sorry I had you all wrong, Sandy. <laughs> That's all right, Bob. But you sure tie a mighty tight gag. <laughs> <laughs> First time Sandy ever kept his mouth shut in his life. <laughs> hey, hey, who's a coming? Hello, Tom. I see you got my wire on time. Hiya, Tim. I've been riding all over the country trying to find you. Knew we were getting warm when we run across Silver up the line. Thanks for bringing him. Hiya, killer. All right. Looks like the rough rider's mopped up again. Yeah, you're right. And here's something that'll make the stretch a little longer for Nelson. There you are, Tom. All right, head him for town, boys. Uh, Marshal, you might stop and pick up that silent partner over yonder. Right. Well, Marshal, I don't know how to thank you. I... Get up in that wagon. Well, I don't understand. Get up in that wagon. Now, Jim, you get on back to town and marry that little girl that's waiting for you. That's just what I'm going to do. Well, if you don't, we're coming back here and find out the reason why. <laughs> Long, Jim. Bye, Marshal. Good luck. That little bit of trouble. Yep, that's right. And speaking of trouble, I don't know how the killer's setting at home, but I'd suggest you come down to the ranch. I'm giving a good big barbecue down there. You know, hot ribs. And speaking of trouble, I got a heap of it stored up for me down there in Texas. Now, you boys, you just got to help me out. How about Tim? Well, you're the one that's marrying the gal, not us. And you just got to help me, Buck. Can't do a thing for you this time, pal. You're going to have to get out of this one by yourself. Because I'm going back to Wyoming. So long, Rough Riders. And I'm heading back for Texas. So long, Rough Riders. <laughs> so long, Rough Riders. Our rough Riders ride. Beware. Our rough Riders ride. Oh, and it's always great to know they're on your side. 